so yeah, my name is Robin. I'm somebody who studies human resiliency and wellness and stress. And I actually have been studying this now almost for two decades. So I've been quite immersed in the kind of academic side of this and the practical side, learning about how we kind of show up in difficult times in our lives and what that looks like for different people. And interestingly, it comes that that interest in studying this comes from a lot of personal experience. And mm. I share quite candidly in all my work that I was a, a teenager who was in a very dark season. And I was a teenager who really struggled with school addictions, mental health, emotional health, just really was, you know, struggling to find my way. And I often let folks know, you know, when we're struggling as teenagers, we often ask for help in all of the wrong ways. And that very much is what I, I did for many years. And what was significant in my own story was experiencing a pretty catastrophic car accident at 16, which just really was like hitting this like reset switch where it started me to kind of realize that I didn't want to show up like this anymore, that I wanted to get well. And I started to do the work. And for me, education became the key of getting back into school and studying about human resiliency and wellness and stress management. And that really kind of catapulted a career where I've been able to study this for the last 20 years. And uh, and probably the most important thing I would share about myself is I'm, I'm a mom of three teenagers, so I am still learning every single day. You detail a lot of great stories about being a mom. And I just thought of the one where your son got lost in the running yeah. event or whatever. You also kind of describe in the book how you developed a sense of yourself and the balance between striving for acceptance or to be validated and fighting, I guess, struggling with society or your teachers or the people around you's perspective of you. You talk a lot about how we often absorb narratives or words that other people use to describe us. And can you maybe paint the picture of how you did go from that, maybe a little bit more detail, um, post-secondary work, academic work, and how you got to writing the book, which really ultimately is what we're talking about, Stress Wisely. Yeah, of course, I'd be happy to. So one of the things I, I talk very openly about in all of my work, and one of the things that's important to me as an educator is not only to braid our research and theory and practice, but also can add that piece around our personal stories and, and this kind of idea of our knowledge and context. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to like read about, you know, a person who struggled academically. Um, I was somebody who has ADHD. I have learning disabilities. That wasn't discussed when I was a child. Those were things that we weren't talking about. Um, I, I think maybe perhaps we were starting to think about maybe young boys with ADHD or ADD, but it was definitely not something that we explored with girls. So again, I was just trying to always compensate, uh, given that I see the world differently, feel the world differently. Again, it was just an attempt to try and fit in and find my way in a world that isn't designed for anyone who kind of thinks outside of the box or looks at the world in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens a lot of time is we develop these maladaptive of ways of showing up. And I very much did develop these maladaptive practices as a teenager. And what I really try to emphasize in the book is once I did have that kind of start my recovery and went through the interventions and started to get myself back on track, what's really kind of, I think, fundamental is the fact that a lot of those drivers of wanting to fit in and to belong very much propelled me on the other side of it, Mike, mm -hmm. where I became essentially what we consider like an overachiever in an attempt to, to fit in, to find my place in space. So I can share with you in a very short time, I went from a high school dropout to a university professor by 27. I went from, you know, someone who really struggled with addictions to somebody who was running marathons. So I just went to the, almost like the opposite end of the extreme. And what was interesting in that season in my life, Mike, the world, like, congratulated me. They like celebrated, like I was doing all this great work, but underneath I was still the same person who was listening to those labels that I wasn't smart enough, that I wasn't good enough. I had to earn my worth. So again, it was just almost as if it was like a reckoning when I realized, yeah, that was pretty maladaptive. This success early on in my career was also maladaptive for different reasons. So then I had to start doing that heart work and started revisiting how do we start to create new narratives to help us understand who we are and who we are not. 